Hi, I'm David Troutman and this is Profile. Today I'm here with my friends from Commerce Choice and we're here to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. I'm with Fiona Jensen, who is the founder and executive director, Adria Kennedy, who is our curriculum director. Um, since many people watching probably don't know a whole heck of a lot, Fiona, why don't you tell us a little bit, where did Commerce Choice come from? What is it? So, Commerce Choice is a nonprofit organization on the Cape that brings mindfulness programs into the public schools. And it started back in 2009, 2010, when my daughter was a junior at Barnesville High School, and there was a series of um, events that happened, including uh, a murder and then a couple of suicides, and I watched her and her peer group really come undone. And it was actually after one of the funerals that I looked around the room, and there was my daughter, who at the, was really struggling at the time, and a couple of her friends who were having issues with some drug addiction, and another friend who was having issues with anxiety and depression and I looked around the room and I thought oh my god like I gotta help out here and I had experienced um, a course called mindfulness based stress reduction a couple of years earlier and I I remember saying to Lily during that time Lily just breathe and she had no idea what I was talking about or why I would say such a thing to her and um, so I actually went to the gentleman who taught me mindfulness and I said you know have you ever thought about bringing this to a school um, and his you know both the conversation we had is yeah but how do you get the kids to me um, and so I, I initially tried like the after-school approach like would you be willing to go and I got a blank no and I thought okay that's not gonna work um, but maybe we could actually get it into the school so over that summer um, I organized a race to raise the money to pay for this guy to come into her school and that's how we really started in 2010 since then, we've. Um, what was really interesting is when we were advertising for the race is when other schools started calling saying, you know what, we have an issue with depression and anxiety and suicide and drug addiction. Can you bring your stress reduction program into our school? And at that point, actually, is when I went to you and also to Adria with the thought of, you know, wow, we need to, like, start a nonprofit. Um, well, mindfulness has become quite a buzzword, if you if you will. I know it's been in the press quite a bit. Uh, I think it was a year ago, February, that it was on the cover of Time Magazine, and now you know there's been a lot of press. Um, either of you, or both of you, tell me what is mindfulness technically? I mean, what is the definition of mindfulness? Handle it. Well, it's it's one of those things that's really difficult to come up with a precise mm -hmm. definition because it's something that needs to be experienced to truly understand what it is. So you'll look in a lot of different literature and there's many different ways people try and describe what it is. Um, so what we use when we talk with the kids and the way that we kind of describe it to them is, is that mindfulness is um, a way of paying attention on purpose both to internal and external experience with kindness, curiosity, and care. And that, that last part there, the kindness, the curiosity, the care, brings in this whole um, realm of compassion and non-judgmental way of being. Okay, so, so what you're bringing into the schools, how does that address issues of substance abuse and self-destructive behaviors? I mean, how does that, how does that play in? So that's a really good question. And you know, when as I was listening to Adria describe that definition, what I realized is when I looked around that room that day after that funeral, what I saw was a lot was a like a group of teens who um, were doing nothing but judging themselves and others. And there was this sense of brokenness that I felt in that room, that there was something really, they felt there was something really wrong. Um, and the whole thing with mindfulness is it's the without judgment, the kindness, the compassion, the curiosity for yourself as a human being that was missing in that room. And that's the piece, you know, that, that if, we, if we can teach kids what it is to uh, experience being human and make it like a like normalize it that the people have anxiety there's nothing wrong with feelings there's nothing wrong with thoughts we all have them and yet we walk around like pretending like we're not supposed to feel that way we're not supposed to think that way um, and so it's a way of, of um, teaching the kids that th there's nothing wrong like 
there might be a situation going on, but how can you step back from that situation, create that space so that you can respond to your environment rather than react? Now we often talk about mindfulness helping kids to build an inner resiliency, if you will, a, 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 the ability to deal with the stress and the anxiety yeah. that you just referred to. But your program brings more than simply the meditation portion of it. That's it's a little bit broader than that. Can you speak to a little bit to the curriculum? Well, we <clears throat> we don't teach meditation, um, and we're really um, particularly clear that mindfulness is a piece. Um, is a part of some of the skills and some of the things um, that is a part of meditation, but we teach the mindfulness piece. And um, so we teach mindfulness in order to give kids kind of that internal ability to notice what they're feeling on the inside, um, how things from the outside are affecting them. And then um, gives them that ability to, to recognize some space between those things so that, again, what Fiona said, they have the ability to make some choices about how they want to react or respond. Okay. And so, how, do, how do you know that works? Well, we, we um, personally, Fiona and I both have a practice of many, many years. Um, and so we came to this. and. Um, I know you too as well, David. We came to this knowing from our own personal experience how it had changed our own lives. And I think... I'm going to stop you one second. I know when I first became involved, people made a reference to a practice. Well, what exactly are you practicing? How do you... What is a practice? What does that mean? Okay, so um, just like I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, in order to understand what mindfulness is, one must experience it. And that's my practice. That's the practice. Okay. It's the practice of of really just getting quiet and really focusing in on where I am in the in this particular moment, what my body is feeling, what my senses are taking in, um, and really just being um, holding that all and noticing it all, and, and that's a different way of being than how we are most of the time. And so, a practice is on a regular basis, on a daily basis, spending time just noticing these things. Great. Okay, I just want to jump in because when you were asking Adria about the curriculum, mm -hmm. I would be curious to, so Adria and I come at this from a different perspective. You're a businessman um, and, I, and you're, on, you're chairman of our board. And I remember your first time you actually went into a classroom, you had this epiphany of, oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can share a little bit of, from your perspective what you've seen and grown to understand what it is that, that it, there we is do. There's no doubt that, that when I initially got involved with the group, I took it on faith that the mindfulness practice alone was what the program was, when in fact the curriculum is far more in-depth, far, far more reaching um, than, than what the press would necessarily focus on. There's no doubt. Classes on, uh, you know, I, I always refer to 50, 50 years ago, even 30 years ago, you had things like citizenship. You had a lot of things that were important in the classroom that are not there anymore. And we're bringing that back in many ways. Uh, the, uh, the idea that we would have a class on kindness or on gratitude, it makes you a good citizen, it makes you a good human being. Um, those are the sorts of things that I think are, are often lacking. And while I certainly would never be a proponent of bringing religion back into the classroom, the fact is this is a completely non-religious way to instill um, certain certain qualities uh, in the classroom um, and a way of being, a way of treating one another. So that to me was my, right, that, my epiphany. Right. right. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So our curriculum actually does um, it combines um, education around mindful practice as well as social emotional learning um, components, and then we have. Um, a piece of it that's about neuroscience and biology and physiology of our body and so that kids have an opportunity to understand their stress response and their brain's response and how all those things um, work together to kind of impact their emotional reactivity or response and so it really gives them an understanding of what's happening okay. internally. So coming back to, to the, the earlier question, how do you know this works? Okay, so 
one of the things that we did that was really important to us as Comrade Choice is, is to focus in on that. If we were going to bring this into the schools, we wanted a way to be able to measure the efficacy of our program. So we worked with um, Tufts University, the Institutional Review Board, and we designed and developed um, an outcomes measurement tool. Um, that was specifically tied with the Massachusetts, Massachusetts curriculum frameworks. Um, um, and we were looking at things that were important for educators and parents. Um, and we um, developed a survey tool that we um, provided to 341 students, which wow. is a pretty good number. Sure. Um, and we were looking at things that are like foundational for interpersonal relationship skills, for um, emotional regulation, impulse control. We ask questions about sleep. So um, the, you say a survey. The kids yes, are making. Yeah, the kids. Oh. The kids filled out the survey okay. before the Karma Choice program and then after the Karma Choice program. Okay. And the results? It was very, very interesting. We. Um, we, we had a graduate student who um, crunched our data and she actually had to keep going back to her professor because she was so um, really like blown away by the results that she got. We found um, statistical significance in every mm -hmm. um, area that we investigated and in a, a, a very many of them we had large changes, large improvements for the kids from the beginning until the end of taking Anything our specific that jumped out at you that we well, saw a big change? Well, we saw a big change in, in uh, like, Liz, right off the top of my head, 38% of those kids admitted they had challenges with test anxiety. 40% of those mm -hmm. kids um, said that they had challenges getting to sleep at night. We had, you know, 25% of those kids who had who who admitted um, they had challenges with with um, calming themselves down when they're upset, about not saying things to other people when they are upset. Now this is the before survey. Yes, okay. before. And so afterwards, what what happened was what we compared is those kids that had those challenges. Those are the ones that made the made great gains okay. at, 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 to the end of our program after our program they had they they said that they had greater capacity to get to sleep at night they had um, less test anxiety um, those sort of things is what we saw so this was the tough study and it, that was on a, right. a rel relatively large scale for right. for what it was right the other piece of that study was mm -hmm. is so we looked at those kids that said that they had challenges and we saw that we made a, a significant impact for those kids but then we looked at all kids and what was impressive to us is that we found that of all kids who took our program 86 percent of those kids could we're now using mindfulness in really practical ways and so they could tell us how they were using mindfulness in their lives 55 percent of kids said that they were using it to calm down um, we had 45 percent of all kids say that they were using it to help them get to sleep at night um, so, and we had like w about one third of all kids were, s were saying after Karma Choice that they were using it to help them um, make better choices. Um, uh, kids were using it to help them listen and focus in class. Mm -hmm. um, so we really got a sense that kids were able to access the information that we were giving them and they were actually able to implement it into their lives in a way that was meaningful for them. Now you mentioned all the kids and the, some of the kids who had not had problems reported initially. It, this is a program that goes into the classroom and is with every single kid in the class. This is not simply at-risk youth hmm. of some sort. Why would you not target those kids if those are the if so what's, what's interesting is when we even when we first first started, um, you know, I came at it from a very personal background, and and um, in that a couple of the kids who had uh, died were friends of my kids, and I remember them saying, you know, okay, you can work with this specific group of kids, this high risk group of kids, and I remember saying, okay, that's fine, we'll work with that group of kids, but the truth of the matter is, is the two kids that just died would not have been in that group, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're this is a this is a universal primary prevention so we deal with every single child in the class because what I can tell you is you don't know who's silently suffering right mm -hmm. um, and I like to use the analogy there's there's public health data now that that um, the average onset for anxiety disorder in this mm -hmm. country and it's a little ticked up on the cape but in this country is age six um, depression and mood disorder is age 12 and so I like to use the analogy of you know picture a 13 year old girl who's got a little anxiety mm -hmm. a little depression and she's in 
the woods, which is what kids do on Cape Cod, probably in a lot of other places around the country, and somebody hands them a drink, you know, a beer or something like that, and the anxiety goes away. I always say that, you know, tell me that that kid's not going to do it next weekend, because you know what, for the first time, she feels like she can deal, right, with her life and being in social situations. And so our feeling is, what if we could go way upstream than that? What if we could start addressing those issues of anxiety and depression and what it feels like to be a human being and actually teach the kids skills that they can have in their toolbox so that when they do reach that age that maybe they they can make a different choice that's you know great. that's great just to finish the thought about <coughs> the studies I know we referred to the study for, with Tufts we're currently underway is a study being conducted by Yale. Right. Can you speak to that briefly? Sure. We were so we completed our um, our outcomes measure project with Tufts, um, <clears throat> and that gave us a lot of experience on how to run a research um, or an outcomes measure project. And we did that, all, you know, mainly in house. Um, we were then approached with, by some researchers from Yale who were very interested in looking and evaluating mindfulness in the classroom mm -hmm. and. Since we have such a, um, a wonderful population now of kids who are, you know, <coughs> starting to integrate mindfulness into their lives, um, they approached us um, to see if we could collaborate and, and figure out a way to begin measuring um, in a more um, stringent way the impact of mindfulness for kids in classroom. And so we were thrilled to be able to try and figure something out. So where is it being conducted at this point? Well, so at this point we have three separate um, kind of intervention levels that are happening. The first, um, the first level is that we're in is Mattachies Middle School, and what we're looking at is just a baseline population. So this is a school for this year that is not getting any intervention. We're just getting baseline data. We have another school, which is St. Francis Xavier Prep, and that school got what we call as our classic common choice program, where our instructors went in and taught the eight-week program, and we measured the before and the after. And then there's Cape Cod Lighthouse Charter, and Cape Cod Lighthouse Charter is a little different because they're getting what we're now calling the comprehensive common choice program, and this is a fuller um, program that has multiple components in it as we're learning how to um, create a model that we might be able to bring into other schools. Um, and so that model entails um, teaching the students. We're also teaching the teachers their own mindfulness um, practice. Um, and we're working with kids for them to develop kind of the branding for their school, artwork, poetry, mm -hmm. prose mm -hmm. for mindfulness within their own school. Can leave anything out? No, I think that's... Well, let me ask you this. A, you've got a lot going on, and you've, you've come a long way. Who's paying for all of this? So funny, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> um, so I just want to, you know, say that the, yeah, none of this is uh, for free, though I have to say there are thousands and thousands of volunteer hours that have gone into this organization. Um, the the cost of the program is this like moving target, right? So the the if we were to actually factor everything in, a class is about twenty five hundred dollars, right, to put on an eight week program. The schools never pay that amount of money because they can't. Um, so we ask the schools to come up with as much as they can. But again, it's a sliding scale. It depends on what we have going on. The actual study, we were very fortunate in that we had um, a foundation called the 1440 Foundation, which is out of Silicon Valley, California, um, that stepped forward. And they were the ones who agreed to help us pay for a portion of what we're doing. Um, and it's interesting because they're in California, we're on the East Coast. The truth of the matter is, is what we're doing here on Cape Cod is getting national and international attention because of the volume of kids that we're working with and the um, integrity of our program. Um, but they, you know, we have road races, we have, um, you know, we have a spelling bee coming up, we have Dan Harris coming to speak for us. All this information is on the website. Um, but it, it takes a, vil it, you know, it takes a village Local basically, funders. and a lot of local funders. Yeah, we've got um, a lot of the banks and the Tower Foundation. I mean, I'm not going to go through them all, but we've 
there's a lot of people who um, are helping this happen. So a lot, some of the happen. larger bills, things like the studies are being taken care of by grants and foundations. The day-to-day yep. -day operations um, are being paid partially by the school, mm -hmm. yep. partially by the fundraisers, the local yep. fundraisers. Yep. Um, but who's paying for the, inf the infrastructure, the overhead? I mean, you've got offices in South Yarmouth. Right. We've got um, the teacher, the, our instructors going into the program yep. are paid in one way, but we still have a few staff members. Yeah, we have I, we have a we have a lot of a uh, lot of us are doing full time work with part time pay, basically, which is I think un unfortunately the world of nonprofits. Um, but we have you know we have a mm -hmm. community partnership, so we have mm -hmm. Cape Associates has helped out. Um, Cape, Air. Uh, Cape Air has mm -hmm. helped out. Uh, you know we've got we have um, uh, you know Toyota. Hyannis Toyota, Orleans Toyota. So mm -hmm. there is a way that communities, the community um, businesses, can get involved to help us out. Um, but really, and then we have private donors. You know, right. we have people that are. You know, it's interesting. Uh, uh, Carol Woodbury, who's the superintendent at DY, was talking about how she's getting calls for people that don't even have children in the DY system. They don't have kids there, but they're saying you need to get this into your schools. The truth is that, that what we're doing in the schools is having an impact on the kids in that school it's a whole cultural shift that is happening which if you talk to the experts on on how to kind of how to address a lot of the the things that ail us on the cape it has to do with shifting the culture and i think there's people you know there's people in the schools that get that but now there's people in the community that are understanding that what it is that we're bringing is is part of the solution right and so you know we're always looking for people to step up and right. help out and you know if there are people who are watching this that would like to do that you know you just go to commerchoice.org there's a donate here button we're happy to come and speak to schools we're happy you know basically Adria and I just came back from San Diego and San Francisco um, because again what it is that we're doing here um, is fairly remarkable Great. Really well, remarkable. I think we're about out of time. Thank you so much. One last, last thing, though, on the Yale is we actually have the research from Yale researchers from Yale coming to speak for us on March 27th at the college. Um, that's a Friday evening from 5:30 to 7:30. Um, and th again, the best thing—it's—it's it's free, open to the public. It'll it, probably sell out. So we're asking people to register ahead by going on the website commerchoice.org to do that. And there'll also be a panel of, oh. of the educators from the community. So from Lighthouse um, yep. Charter, Paul Niles, who's the um, okay. the director of Lighthouse Charter, will be there. And so it will be the Yale folks talking about mindfulness, but also folks from our community who have been um, actually involved with it, sharing about their experiences with it as well. Great. So we're excited, we're excited yeah. about that and yeah. would love to have them, folks in the community. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you for watching. Thank you.